everybody. I'm doing a follow-up session for a client. If you're interested in checking out previous sessions with this client, be sure to check the description. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the goals here and get started. All right. I would like more energy work to continue helping to release blocks to help with better health. Scoliosis, ulcers, high blood pressure, extra weight. I stopped smoking a little over a year now, almost uh, after almost 40 years. I still have periodic bouts with anxiety. Just want to feel freer with more energy, gratitude, and joy as we move into this new year so I can feel confident as I have several upcoming job interviews for the next leg of our, my daughter and I's, life journey. Also, I want to revisit the status of my relationship with alien visitors and how it relates to my mission in life. All right. These are some awesome goals for the end of 2020, moving into 2021. Okay. I'm just taking it all in here. Okay. I'm going to relax now and get started. Talking to the universe now about all the goals. <sighs> right now, I'm just getting acquainted with your energy field. I feel like I'm standing really, really high up. And I'm looking down, but not necessarily. There's this giant egg of energy. And it's coming from low down on the ground, way down there. It's like I'm on a cliff side. And so this massive egg comes up even above this cliff side, but I'm kind of looking into it. It's a bluish color. It's a starry night. It's got a dry desert-like feel. Deserts with uh, big rock structures. No sand, really. It's just dusty and dry. This right now, it's it's got some effect on my heart, but it doesn't necessarily make me feel discomfort. It could even make me feel intrigued, interested. So there's a positive side to it. There's some stress on the back of the neck here as I look into this. There's also an energetic relationship with the sacral chakra. All right, the next experience I have is I have to wait, okay? So I'm looking, inspecting, contemplating, feeling. Um, I'm trying to touch it. I'm trying to go into it. I'm trying to investigate it in a way that we can get some answers. Well, what in the world is this? But I have to wait. So there's this uh, experience of time. Um, time is um, asking me to just do the investigation, do the observation, um, no actual participation in this further. But I can look at it, I can interact with it to a degree, so there's this delay of time. And it's kind of nice because activity, I'm not, I'm, there's no stress involved, I don't feel like I'm having to invest a lot in, in the way of um, putting myself into anything. There's no real action or activity. It's more so sitting back looking instead of entering into and working with this experience. This could be a message about life. It could be a message about... <sighs> I know you said you have several job interviews coming up. I know we're going through a coronavirus experience. Um, maybe there's been time where you have felt a separation from the activity. So that's actually a good thing. It feels quite lovely to me, almost like a winding down time, a gift. 
I still waiting, I'm still waiting, I'm still waiting, I'm still waiting, I'm still waiting, and my foot is getting like it's tapping, okay? <laughs> Because I want to do something. I want to do more than this. I don't want to just stand here and look. I want to interact with. I want to learn more about this. It's a surreal structure. You know, it's starting to take on the look of a spaceship. Almost a cartoon style one where um, it's kind of bulbous at the top and then it kind of comes up. It, it's an egg shape, but it's starting to get more structured. Like you could almost see it as like a rocket going to go out into outer space. And it's a blue color. It's like a deep, um, dark blue and it's got like a shimmery, uh, sparkly effect to it. I can look into it, but it doesn't appear as though anything is inside. I'm, again, feeling frustrated. I'm feeling frustrated with this earth in a way. And it's not like um, I'm disappointed in the human race. I'm disappointed in... I, I can't explain it. It's like something is missing in life. Something really vast and, and interesting is missing here with earth life. I know you're mentioning about alien visitors, and I remember that session. And this actually feels like a, a longing for, for an interaction, something beyond the human experience, something that is intriguing, something that is um, surprising, different than yourself. This is a good feeling. This isn't an anxiety or fear. What's interesting is this whole time, there's no ability for me to um, participate in anything. Um, and I experience frustration with that. This is a reflection of you. Um, this is all about you. What's going on inside yourself. And you may relate to some of this stuff. So as I'm standing here, I really want to do more. Um, and this time of just kind of sitting back and watching, observing, I, I really want to be participating in part of an action. And I'm feeling it. I'm feeling, um, I don't want to wait around. I don't want to, I want to be involved in something. So I'm going to switch it out from I to you now, okay? So I see you standing on this cliffside investigating this massive ship. And it's like a rocket, okay? So it's not like a, a, a disc-type <laughs> alien spaceship. It's more like a human um, rocket ship. Okay, this is good. So you're touching this... Um, Whatever, it's like a substance. It's not like a physical, um, like a metal or something like this. It's more like an energy that creates the form of it. And so you're touching this and you feel, um, you're starting to be full of anger inside. Something is coming back to you now. And I'm just going to describe everything I see here, but you're really angry and you're, t you're clenching the fists and pounding them onto the top because we're up high. So you're kind of at the top of the stru spaceship structure. So you're pounding it in and it does sound like metal when you hit it. And the sky's getting really dark all of a sudden, like really the stars are not there. There's a darkness kind of coming around and sort of uh, um, work. It's kind of um, circulating around us. It's almost like um, if you take a picture and then you can um, put the shadow around the edges or make it white. It's like this image has like darkness all around all the edges. And it's almost like we're going into, it's like swallowing us up in a way. And it's coming from all sides. But you don't notice it yet. You're still angry in your heart. I'm going to slow down time. It's just moving too fast. So I'm just slowing things way down. I'm actually going to separate you from the anger. So there's the you that's angry. I'm going to leave that you over here. And I'm taking out the you that's not angry. And we're going to look at... There's just some little tiny beings here, okay? They're little. like They're adorable. <laughs> 
they're like baby Yoda in a way, but they're like little gray aliens. This is kind of what it looks like, okay? So we're, we're, I'm just having you that's not angry and just see what's here, okay? You can't not be angry. Um, the you, <laughs> this other you, is now facing these little little aliens, and you're really mad. You're transforming into kind of a monster, and you've got big, uh, massive rock-like arms, and you're pounding them down onto these little beings. Right now, this is just venting, okay? This is venting unresolved anger related to alien visitors. Like you hate them. You hate them. It's it's okay. It, it, you you this is unresolved. Unresolved re energetic relationship with the concept of alien visitors. You hate their guts. You hate them. You hate them all. Um, I, I, there's lots of echoes of like a spider with a, a needle and the needle puncturing and it's um, cutting into the skin very delicately. <sighs> there's uh, different overlays of really small, like um, almost perfect very thin um, lines, like spider web, like um, really thin, oh, perfect lines cut into skin. And I don't feel any pain about this, but I'm watching it. Um, and there's a lot of anger about this. I gotta, I'm gonna have to calm this way down because it's gonna be very hard for me to understand what this is all about until I can get beneath the surface of the anger. So right now it's just sound like, bah, bah, <laughs> like, like it sounds insane in here. <laughs> it's like screaming, blowing things up. <laughs> so I can't actually understand what's going on. I see these images, I'm connecting the dots here, but let's just, let's just <laughs> work on relaxing this down, okay? So you can understand where is this all coming from. So I'm going to actually separate you again from this angry self. So we're, we have um, angry selves still venting, okay? We're going to continue to let them vent because you have a lot of unresolved anger. Um, and then let's get to this next version of you, okay? The, the least angry version of you, okay? Let's see how this goes. All right. Um, okay, my guys are telling me to just like basically all these U's. We're gonna set all these U's over here, um, and then I'm gonna have to disconnect from that energy, and we're gonna have to start with some fresh energy investigating this. Okay. So I'm doing that right now. Okay, so what can you tell me here about alien visitors in a way that we can heal all of this trauma? All right, I'm experiencing totally new um, well, I'm still feeling all the same old stuff, but it's like I'm I'm allowed to enter into like a higher um, vibrational experience. I feel like I'm floating upward. Um, my third eye is involved, my crown, some energy in the back of the head, and I'm sort of being pulled up by my head in a way. You know what's interesting here is there's there's so much energy that doesn't want to hear it that doesn't want to, it's like trying to mute it out. Um, we got to break that down. We got to let it be okay to hear. We got to let it be okay to see. To remember. So I'm sending these vibes that it's okay to see and to remember. Souls have post traumatic stress. 
Souls, souls can't cope sometimes with hearing and remembering and seeing because it was simply too hard. In certain lifetimes, it was just simply too hard. So when you feel all of this um, discomfort or anger in your relationship with alien visitors, you have hard um, memories. You have difficult memories that weren't okay. Unresolved. The thing is, is that we're moving on now. And we don't even know what these lives are. So should we still hold on to them? And we want to honor what your soul's gone through. So yes, it, it matters. It really does matter what you went through. But now we can see it from a higher vantage point and look into it and understand why that experience took place. How that is, <coughs> excuse me, um, how that has impacted your soul in growth and development. We need to see it from a higher um, viewpoint, not being inside of the event that was too hard, but sort of um, rising above it and looking in and understanding why. This is doing a lot here. The third eye, the crown, the back of the head, my shoulders. I feel I feel really exhausted, really worn out. I'm going to create a door and we're going to go through the door and we're going to visit a lifetime. Any lifetime could be really traumatic, really difficult, or it could be really beautiful, okay? Um, we're going to open the door, we're going to go in, and we're going to see a lifetime related to you and alien visitors. It could be on this planet, it could be on other planets, you could be the alien visitor visiting some other species. Um, it could be anything. Okay, here's the door. The door is actually... A manipulative door. <laughs> it's black. It has a uh, gold uh, metallic in it. And so it, it kind of uh, moves. It's almost like the light moves from within the door. In it, but I can see it shine from inside of itself. But when I touch the handle, it feels more like I'm touching acid than getting burnt or electrocuted. It's almost like I'm being like an acid chemical burn. And it's uh, shorter than me. And again, the feeling of anger is rising up from even beneath. It's like beneath the emotional gut. It's like, it's almost like sacral chakra and then emotional gut and then heart. It's like coming down from lower chakras and then through the heart. A lot of anger. And there was never a going through the door. Now we're trapped inside of a box that's um, building itself around us. And there's a being here made out of um, thin light. And he's uh, lemony for some reason. He's like, um, he's, he, you can't, it's very hard to eat a lemon. So he's very hard to take in. Um, it's, it's almost excruciating. If a lemon, if you could take a bite of a lemon and it would be torturous, that's this guy. And his energy is sort of like very thin light, but it does kind of create just a very fine um, shape of a head into a very s tiny neck, uh, like like a, a toothpick thin, like super thin, um, stretched, slightly stretched, but shorter than us. This, this is really complicated, okay? It's not like he's made out of um, physical material. He's made out... I, I, I'm still trying to understand what created this being. Because he's not organic, per se. <laughs> it's almost like he's made out of a laser beam. And he's uh, full of hate, okay? And it feels like your hate as well matches his hate. But he's not doing anything. He's just present here. I start to see the dynamics of this small box room become an infinite universe. It's quite terrifying because we can see the walls. But if you were to walk towards the walls, you'll never ever reach them. It's uh, really a nightmare. 
It's uh, very, very scary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him in an orb. And I'm going to tell you that it is safe. And I'm going to bring him closer. It's interesting because we can bring him closer, but we can never reach the walls of the room. So how far away is he from us? <laughs> we need to gain control here. Um, I'm going to give you permission. It's like you need to give yourself permission to know that the distortion of time and space in a way has not happened. You can touch the walls. This is actually as small as it appears. You can walk the distance between us and this being. You can touch this orb. Nothing is going to hurt you here. We need to alter the relationship with this inside yourself. What's interesting is with all the things that you're wanting to work on entering into 2021, um, this alien visitors is a really big deal in your energy field. I mean, this is loud enough that it could influence a lot of these, you know, experiences that you're going through with health and all that. Because it's still alive at the, in your energy field. This energy is still active and alive. So even if you don't have a conscious awareness of it or, or an understanding of it or, or you know, it's hard to, ma to um, put the pieces together, it's still energetically active, which means it's still um, part of the building blocks you're using to get through each and every day. Even if you don't have a conscious understanding of it, it's there. And this could also be part of that anxiety that you feel. All right, now this is even more complicated because um, uh, your guides are showing me, this is, no wonder this is affecting my third eye, crown, back of my head, and it feels like my head is being pulled like I'm a stuffed animal in one of those games with the, um, the claw. <laughs> I feel like the claw's got my head is pulling me. It doesn't hurt or anything. I just feel like I'm being pulled. Um, it was kind of nice to be pulled to a higher vantage point entering into this door, you know, but now all this, uh, we're facing discomfort energy that is, that is uncomfortable. It's presenting itself like this so we can work through it. Um, the new scene is, um, I'm not, con I'm kind of, sh um, it's like, I'm not awake. Okay. And this is a, like some kind of nightmare dream I'm going through. I'm in uh, like a hospital bed. Okay, that's what it looks like in my in my vision of it. I'm sleeping in a hospital bed and then in the brain, in the mind of the person sleeping, um is this experience going on? And you're right to time and space. You're right to dimensional like you're right to um what is comfortable for to a human being is taken away from you. So everything is a nightmare about this. This being is still in an orb, okay? I'm doing that to create a boundary. And this being can't get out of this orb. Okay. You're still, you're still going through a coping state. <laughs> you're still working through this. Your head is overwhelmed, all right? There's a, so much energy going on with the, within and around um, the head. And it's very exhausting. It's very, 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 very exhausting. You're very angry um, still. And I say, let's stop being angry now because we need to actually start understanding. Let's start working with a different form of relating. Let's see this as an exciting adventure. Let's see this as a new experience. Let's see this as something outside the box. Let's see this as a gift. We had to alter the energy because if we work with anger, it's going to get us literally nowhere. And it's only going to get louder and louder and louder and louder. And it's not going to help us understand literally anything. We had to change that energy. 
we have to um, approach whatever creates the anger. We have to see it differently in order to neutralize that. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to understand here what you're telling me. There's a new scene wanting to show itself. Because, I mean, you are so extremely angry. It's very, it's like, I've already separated you from your angry self so many times, you know, and I'm now I'm going into a new space. This is your relationship with visiting aliens, alien visitors. Like, you see how this, how loud this is? Um... I can't just snap my fingers. You have to choose from deep down inside yourself. You have to choose. So all I can do is continue to encourage you to choose. Um, that nothing makes any sense to, lang to my language. It's like, um, what's making you so angry? Show me something that hurt. Did it hurt you? Did it um, lie to you? Did it, like, so I'm trying to say that it, none of it translates. It, none of it is translatable. I'm going to have to let it just be as weird as it wants to be with nothing making any sense. I'm just going to let it develop itself. I'm going to let you tell me and then I'm just going to let it be shapes or be whatever it needs to be in order to explain why you're so angry. All right, you show me a nose and the nose is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And, bigger. and it's like a balloon, but it's made out of really thick material. Now you're showing me a jaw and there's a, a some kind of m actual like a machine, like an assembly machine thing that cuts the jaw straight off just so you have no lower jaw. And you're turning into a freak. You're, you're basically, a, you are being taken and you are being transformed into something that isn't you in a, very, in a way that is very painful to you. And it's terrifying um, to conceive of this reality. It's terrifying to conceive of it. Um, because I don't feel like this is a human memory. I feel like this is an alien memory. Because it doesn't translate to the human... Um, it doesn't translate in any of my human emotions. It's like a, a being that has a certain um, emotional, mental, physical like relationship with itself as a form in the universe. And that form is being mutated and transformed and it's a painful process. Um, and it's absolutely terrifying. It's not even conceivable in that mind of that form of that race of beings. You're part of a race of beings. You're taken. This is uh, helping me to understand you you're basically um, put through a process um, and transformed into something different than yourself. I am actually given given um, ideas here. Take a very manly man and now force him to get breasts and remove his male parts and turn it into a vagina. Um, and now have him wake up and look in the mirror and see how he is going to cope with that. A very manly man who has nothing to do with wanting to be a woman now turn into a woman. It would be a psychologically psychological nightmare, a sexual nightmare, physical nightmare, emotional nightmare. Be a nightmare upon nightmare upon nightmare upon nightmare upon nightmare. And it would be very angering, right? So it would be parallel to something like this, but it's it feels way more extreme than that. It feels extremely painful as well. Like you were awake the whole time that this weird transformation was happening. And there's no reason for why this, this, the, the in your um, mind and your perception of things, um, there's no, there's no justify, there's no good reason for why um, this would ever happen. There's no, there's no justified reason. There's just, there's no reason that is good enough to do this to anybody, anywhere, anywhere in the universe. You don't take somebody out of their happiness and then turn them into a freak 
while they're awake and experiencing the pain and suffering that taking them from what is like a very happy like you could watch like cartoons for kids and it's really really happy and everybody's smiling and everybody's so kind to each other like it's an environment you're taking from an environment where everybody is really happy and then doing something that is inconceivable to their mind they don't have any chaos there they don't have any darkness there you want to you want a, a good reason as to why that this was acceptable like you you need something to justify like you you, you can't justify this like you your soul is saying no <laughs> big time no on this will not ever accept this will not ever be okay with it, with this never will um ever so that that won't ever heal right cuz we're never going to be okay with it we have to become okay with it that's part of the healing process. <laughs> That's part of the impossible healing process, but it isn't impossible. This is why this is what helps you to grow, ex exponentially grow. And when we heal this one life, we heal every single life in the past and the future and all cycles of time. Do you see how powerful it is when you just simply choose to to approach to to choose a different energetic relationship with something that is impossibly okay like it's not okay kind of thing let's see let's everything's silent right now you were never given a lifetime where you got to retaliate you never got revenge which i think is a blessing don't you what would your revenge have looked like? Do the same to them that they did to you. The reason why you could never do the revenge is because you can't ever be that type of being. You can't do that. You just simply can't um, fill those shoes. So your soul just doesn't choose those types of lives. You just simply don't. You you're thinking right now okay there's more there's a lot more this also is very hard to understand i i don't even know what how to describe what it is i'm looking at it's basically like a bunch of doors that are like rainbows but they're brown, dark brown colors and black. Um, there's buttons. They're kind of like circles that are around these. Like, um, are these doors or is this some kind of weird skin? <laughs> it's bumpy. It's like Braille. And it's kind of slimy too. Everything's going quiet again. And you're thinking. Somehow your soul knew what that was. <laughs> you're thinking. All of this has to get re reconciled. It's going to make a big difference on how you feel in this life. And it's going to make a big difference on a lot of lives past present future like in all of time in all the cycles of time it's all going to circulate in a brand new way so you want to talk about feeling like a new person for 2021 this will do it <laughs> you don't trust aliens because they do things like this they take a a happy like innocent um race of beings so innocent and so happy it would make any child like eyes just glow with joy <laughs> and wanting to be a part of the those innocent beings lives you know and you take that and then you you trans you do this to it it's it's terrible like if if an alien race has the caliber to do that then um, that no alien beings, none, you will never trust a, a visitor from another, um, star planet. <laughs> you will never trust 
anybody from the stars ever again for all of eternity. You'll never, ever, 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 ever trust anyone from the stars ever again. Ever, 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 ever again. I say that that's the point. Um, you're going to have to to change the attitude. How how are we going to change the attitude? I mean, how could I expect that of you based on what you're telling me, based on what you're showing me? Are all alien beings like this, this race of beings that came, are they all like that? I mean, I feel like there's so much more to this life and more inconceivable aspects of this life but I, I feel like we're we are touching on it. We're getting into it. We are opening up um, that pocket um, in a way that is safest so that we can investigate it, look at it, resolve it from within. I mean, it's so loud. It's like sitting on your heart. It's like so incredibly loud this life and your soul still has never gotten um there's no justice that ever happened that alien race never received any justice like nothing ever changed but i see you basically you basically it's, it's kind of like this you're you're sitting in a tree and you're a pouty child um, thinking about um, those mean kids and no nothing ever uh, happens to those bullies. Um, the nice kids get ripped apart and the bullies just get away with it. They'll always get away with it. And you can't accept that. The bullies get away with this. Like, you can't. And you were, I mean, this is the best way I can explain in, in human language, okay? So again, I mean, you see how you have aspects of your soul that are really, this, we need to get, move on from this. We need to, we need to move on from this. There's so much more. I'm going to wait for a minute and see if we need to keep going with this or if we need to shift gears. <sighs> I'm going to just watch the scene play out, but I'm not going to, I'm going to really work on focusing. It's, this seems to be kept under control. This is too angry. There's another wave of like uh, anger coming out. So I'm taking the child out of the tree. It's like the whole sky is turning blood red. The tree is um, br a broken bone and it's starting to fall to the ground. Like everything's turning into a horror scene, but I'm just ignoring all that. Just taking this child out of the tree and we're just going to see this as done. It's done now. It's all done. It's over. And I show you again, so these race of beings, they, they don't really seem to have a face. They're kind of made out of a weird energy. And they can kind of phase into being dense or being light. And I will say it's like a chemical burn is the way that they vibrationally feel. And they kind of, um, they aren't necessarily thinking for themselves. It's like they're, they're tuned into a, a root light that is, um, they're like, uh, parts of a, um, like a root system, like arteries and veins going through the body. It's, 
And they, they just feel impulsive, like um, instinctive, completely and utterly instinctively moving, like um, <clears throat> like they're called to from inside themselves. They, they get direct influence. Um, it, they almost feel like artificial intelligence in a way. Like um, I can I can experience what is this like their god in a way their god mind um, directing so many of these beams of light. And just having you look at their. They have no eyes, m nose, mouth. They're just like they're a denser form now, and they're not small. They're tall. They're quite tall. It feels like they could be any form, really. They don't really think for themselves. They're just guided. They're perfectly guided. You're starting to understand their personality is helping you. And then they didn't really, they weren't really acting upon any type of heart because they have no heart. They don't even really have a mind. But they're, it, like, there's, like, um, a pooling of, of, of direction. And they just do. They don't think about what they're doing. They just act. I feel like there was a time where the u the balance of the universe, um, these manifested, in order to c create the the next balance in the universe, which it feels like these beings manifested, were manifesting really dark, twisted. What we would define as dark and twisted, they don't feel that way. They just feel like a chemical broom. But their their influence would have been very disturbing to see. Okay. I don't, I don't feel their, um, their role exists here in our version of time and space. In an older cycle of the universe, yes. I feel like they were all sent back into the light. That's kind of surreal to say because um, it's like God puts them, God, God directed them. <laughs> but we are all part of source, so yes, that's true. This feels like such a ridiculously long time ago, like cycles of lifetimes ago, like several upon several, like a really old version of the universe that you still remember because you know what can happen. You know what can happen. You know how the impossible, the most disturbing impossible is possible. And what that can do. And what that can look like. And it's inconceivable to the mind. So I don't really feel like I would define these as alien beings. Because they don't seem to live off of food. There's no physical. Like they can be denser or completely light. It's almost like they were called into existence in order to cr ripple, in order to create ripples in the creation, and basically to birth chaos, and then called back once chaos was born, and then chaos now could live and exist. There's a reason why chaos exists, you know. You're starting to feel deep. You're starting to feel... Uh, like the age, the wise age of your soul, you're starting to see the dynamic of who you are is so much more than a human. You're starting to understand why you would have a difficult time trusting um, beings from outside of your familiarity, okay? <laughs> This has to be healed because it almost feels like you've created walls up that are extremely inappropriate. Like you're not meant to have certain energy walls up because you're meant to um, embrace diversity in the universe. You're meant to um, feel like a loving connection with soulmates that are incarnate as other beings that you can't even talk to because this still hadn't resolved yet. You see what I mean? 
it's going to fill you with so much love and so much self-respect, like on a level you would never even thought. And it's like you can respect yourself, but wow, now you can really respect yourself knowing the seeing into this kaleidoscope um, of your soul's dynamic, you know? This is a really painful um, scene, painful memory, painful part of you. Everything's relaxing significantly. Like, you feel whole. You actually feel whole. You feel like you're wanting... Like... Okay. I'm just going to sit with this for a minute. It's beautiful to feel whole like this. It's beautiful to wake up from a weird daze. And know that you don't have to be angry anymore. All of a sudden. It's weird to feel a relationship with such an old version of time. And an old version of the universe. It's weird, but it's kind of beautiful in a way, too. <sighs> I see. That strange room we saw with a weird relationship with time and space that was a nightmare... That is actually part of your own manifestation based on how you were able to cope with your life experience and how long it's been. So you need to break your own walls down. It's actually going to be a really, really good. Can you imagine how healing this is going to um, alter the, the flow of everything in your present life? Everything is interconnected. So when you heal a single past life, it changes the dynamic flow of everything. Everything is affected. The whole universe is affected. It's pretty incredible. Oh, I'm supposed to do one more thing, okay? We're breaking down these walls, but we're going to have to do something like impossible, all right? The impossible is we're kind of still standing in that room with the walls and the, and the cube shape and the distortion of time and space where you could infinitely walk to try to touch a wall. You'll never touch it. You created this for yourself. In a way, it kept you safe from your memory that was inconceivable, it's too hard to cope with, and the soul level, okay? It's like soul post-traumatic stress. Now, you have to look at one of these beings as a reflection of yourself because that's, that, that is where we have to um, understand that everything is a part of source and we are a part of source, so we are a part of everything, so that is the truth. Oh my gosh. It's not hard, believe it or not. It's actually enlightening on a level that is um, expanding the mind. In like, it's mind blowing, but it's like in a really awing way, like. Like seeing the northern lights for the first time, it's like inconceivable. <sighs> like, you can't even, it's like we're looking into this weird face, the more denser version, not just the thin strip of light that kind of formed a small body. <sighs> you kind of, you, you're trying to decide what how you feel, if you feel um, sad for these beings or sad for this aspect of yourself, so to speak, which would have been impossible to feel that way before. You're sending away all the anger that you've ever felt. 
starting to understand that it was never going to be understood. It never would have been understood unless you returned to source about it. It's the only way, and you never did because it was too difficult of a life. So you got stuck in, like, the purgatory for all these cycles of time. <laughs> You're so done with this. You are so done with this. Even now, you can't conceive of how you feel, but you don't feel angry at all. And you feel just so, like, the age and how old this is. Like, you, it's like, it, it, you can't believe how long ago it was. Because when you're in purgatory, you're in infinite space, so you can't tell time. Like, a bajillion years could pass and it would feel like a single day, you know? Like, so it, it's just, like, it's all coming back to you. And you're so ready to grow and move on from this. You're changing the whole dynamic landscape of your energy field. I mean, it, we're already, everything is happening so fast. Everything we've seen, everything we've done is just totally, like, gone, disappeared. We're even back to the original scene with this, this sort of giant egg-shaped orb that kind of turned into a rocket ship and all that. We're even back here. We're just done with all these scenes. Like, you're just, like, ready to paint a picture as some kind of new art, okay? And it's like you're you're kind of explosive um, with creative visions, new ideas. You're actually wanting to channel from what would be like alien races, but it's like the collective energy of different beings from all over the universe and their diverse natures, their diverse ideas and feelings and relationships with love and, and everything. Like you, there's like this artist sort of developing inside yourself and you're like very fast, very, very fast about um, what, what it is that you're doing. <laughs> I'm going to I'm I'm going to stay here for just another minute here. You feel just activated. You feel bright, you feel up to speed, you feel new. If you still have remnants, just give this time, like literally give this session a good 30 days. And you may have remnants of um you may still have remnants of not liking alien beings, but I feel like a lot of that is ready to just be done with. You're just ready to be done with it. It's like you had to carry that energy in this life so that it could properly resolve. Um, it could fully resolve somehow. I don't feel like you're meant to have interactions that are scary with alien beings. At least not now Now moving forward. I feel like you're going to attract creative, inspiring, beautiful, um, even channeling messages that you don't even realize you're doing it. Um, channeling um, ideas, building, like, I don't know, it just feels like art to me. Like like um, a brand new way of painting, brand new way of, of creating in your life. Brand new way of feeling about yourself and your relationship with love. You know, if it, it feels like a new, like um, a major upgrade into a new vibe, totally new vibe. Okay, <laughs> that's all I have to share. Oh wow, that's so cool. <sighs> Thank you so much for this experience. Thank you for exploring all these goals with me. I. I didn't expect it would go the, the route of the alien beings first as, as the totality of your session, but I can see how healing this is going to impact literally everything on the list and actually make you feel like a new person entering into 2021, like ready for a new relationship with the universe, you know? It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Thank you for sharing as well. For those of you um, watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, you can visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I also have two other YouTube channels, so you can um, check me out at Abby Normal and Zodiac Energy Readings. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right, have a wonderful um, rest of your day, everybody. Thank you for watching.